Praise God. Amen. But I want you to extend your hand toward me because I, I don't believe I can do anything. You know, I go home, I prepare stuff, you know, but it doesn't mean anything if the Holy Spirit doesn't touch me. Praise God. Or touch you. You know what I'm saying? If you just want a sermon, you can go anywhere and get a sermon. But you want a word that's going to make a difference in your life next week. See, next week when you're going through something, you want to say, you know what? I remember what Pastor said about that thing I'm going through. And that word is going to keep me and help us to preach it, to be able to preach it, bless the hearers to be able to hear it, and bless us all to be able to do it in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I ask the ushers to pass out some little papers. I don't know if they did it already. If you don't have one, you raise your hand again. Because we've been talking about the cross all of this month. And, and uh, let me just tell you before I get started, you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, that there are messages that we get from God. But, you know, I, I want to tell you the purpose of this message. One, one, well, or read at least how this message came to be. About one year ago today, God began to speak to me, you know, about, uh, you know, I was thinking about the alcoholic, uh, Alcohol Anonymous, how they had a 12 step which I think is a great program. It does help a lot of people. It doesn't help everybody, but it helps a lot of people. But the fact that they, you know, they can't focus in on any particular religion or whatever. But amen. But God began to tell me, he said, well, I got 12 points. And I'm, you know, I'm writing it down. And he said, he said, the 12 points that he's had were the 12 points of the cross. And I said, 12 points of the cross. Now, I've never seen that. But if you look at your paper and, and you're looking at it, you'll see that the cross actually has 12 points on it. You know, if you, if you count, you know, the two at the top, the two at the intersection, the two. And, you know, God began to tell me about 12 points of the cross because I, it didn't really gel with me. That was actually one year ago today. And it wasn't until this month that we were talking about the cross. Praise God. And, and we said one of the things about the cross is the cross was actually a symbol of death. How, how Christianity took the cross, turned it around, and made it a symbol of life. Praise God. And that one of the things I think the problem that we have is we don't understand the things that were given to us in the cross. And so, you know, as, as I begin to uh, uh, think about this, God told me when I started this discussion this morning, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show people exactly what happened at the cross and what you have. Because if you know what you have, it might affect what you do. Is that right? I mean, you can't fight a battle and you don't, you're not armed. You know, you go out and you go to fight a battle and you, you feel like, well, you know, I don't have any weapons. And then you somebody say, well, we're reaching your back pocket. You say, oh, you mean I'm armed? Now you're better prepared for the battle. Well, one of the reasons that one of the tricks that the devil has been playing to us, amen, and it's really not the devil's trick, praise God, but he's playing on our flesh. He tells us you're not anybody. I mean, you go to church, we always tell you, you know, you're a sinner. You're doing the things wrong. And, you know, I'm not saying that we're lying. It's the truth. But we tell you about how bad you are, not because we want you to feel sorry for yourself. We tell you about how bad you are because we want you to understand how good God is. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Because, amen, one of the things that you find out that, praise God, amen, when we talk about 12 points of the cross. Now, now it's interesting. So why do you choose 12? Well, first of all, it's 12 points. But the Bible has a significant principle. And one of the principles of the Bible, or principle of hermeneutics, that's just a big word for Bible interpretation. But one of, one of the uh, principles of uh, Bible interpretation is the numerological principle. I think I said it right. Numerological principle. Okay, yeah, it sounds close enough, right? Amen. It's the principle about numbers, that numbers mean something to God. Now, I know a lot of times we read the Bible and we'll come across number two or number three and we think they're insignificant. But how many realize that in the mind of God, nothing is insignificant? Amen. That every number carries a purpose and a meaning. Now, I do not want you to confuse this with numerology. Numerology is cultic because it makes ideas about numbers and it's not based on the Bible. The difference between the numerological principle and numerology is we base our stuff upon what the book said. We're not just coming off the top of our head. Oh, I dreamed about, you know, four people. Oh, that means that, you know, there's four things that are going to happen. But what does God say about numbers? Well, one of the things we know about numbers is we know that there were 12 disciples, right? And the Bible says that in heaven, there are 12 foundations to the city. You can go to the next slide. Amen. You, you find out that there, there were 12 tribes of Israel. So 12, and you might want to put this somewhere in your paper. Amen. 12 is the number of government 
and 12 is the number of foundations. Today we're going to talk about the basics of the cross, and Wednesday we're going to talk about the benefits of the cross. What did I just say? Basics of the cross, of the cross today, and the benefits of the cross on Wednesday. In Psalms 147 and 4, it says, He telleth the number of the stars, and he calleth them all by name. Now, how many of you were here when we did that, uh, that video called Indescribable, when it was talking about all those stars, which we just, I just watched the other day again. But it showed that the universe is so big that the earth is not even a speck of dust in the universe. I mean, if, if, if you compare the earth to the universe, the earth is practically invisible. But this is where we 14 and 16 said, and he said, the Lord numbers your steps. God knows exactly how many steps you are going to take before you die. How smart is that? I mean, if he's at, if he's at least as smart as me, maybe I should ask him for advice. You think? You think? Praise God. Amen. If you find out in, in Matthew, amen. Uh, uh, 10 and 30, the Bible says, and the very hairs of your head are numbered. I mean, who counts hairs on head? The first principle of the cross, starting at the cross, amen, that's why you have your paper, is the, the, the benefit, amen, or the basic of salvation. Now, before we move on to anything, we got to make sure that we got that right. Somebody say amen. amen. Because if you don't have that right, everything else I'm telling you ain't going to apply to you this morning. Praise God. Amen. And so you'll find out the benefit of salvation. Now, one of the reasons I, I, I mean, excuse me, the basic of salvation. Amen. One of the reasons I, I'm dealing with that is because, praise God, this is what I mean by salvation. I mean being saved and knowing that you are. Amen. I want you to go. The scripture that I want to use with this, amen, is uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. James read it this morning. Praise God. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says this. If, you, if you're not turning there, just listen. The Bible says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us who, but but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Praise God. In other words, the cross has no meaning to you if you're not saved. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so you'll find out that here, here's what we do: we get we get people who don't know Jesus, and they look at the cross and they try to analyze. Well, you know, it don't look so good. I mean. You know, is there any real benefit? You will never see the benefits of salvation until you get saved. Amen. Amen. So number two is forgiveness. And you shall find that forgiveness accomplished. Amen. Amen. Because forgiveness accomplished, uh, uh, Colossians 2 and 13, it says, it's in you being dead in your trespass, you being dead in your sins, and uncircumcision in your flesh has to be quickened together, and with him having forgiven you all trespasses. Now, first of all, when Jesus Christ forgave you of your sins, how many did he leave? Huh? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't believe in sinless perfection. I, I, I don't believe that nobody is so perfect they can't sin. But I do believe that once God saves you, he saves you perfectly. You have to do something. For instance, the Bible says... If you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you yours. Does that mean I'm not forgiven? No, it's still going to come. He paid for it. But he said, I'm giving you some ways to apply it to your life. You want to be forgiven? Forgive others. Somebody say now, hey man, the, the point three we want to talk about is, is the atonement. That's right up there. Now, praise God. Everything we're doing is going to be on this right side. And I kind of like that little cute man. It's right for you. He just says the basics. Praise God. You know what I mean? Now, atonement is a little bit of a tricky word. And, and it, looks, it looks like a big theological word. It's in the Bible. But actually, it starts in the Old Testament. The word atonement actually means to cover. But in order for the sake of this class, praise God, or this teaching, I want you to break it up into uh, three words. Praise God. And actually, I want you to put a T in there. It's at one minute. Don't say atonement. Say at one minute. What does that mean? That it is the idea of making me one with God. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what atonement means. In the Old Testament, it's talking about a covering. In the New Testament, it's talking about being reconciled. Anybody understand the concept of reconciled? Reconciled means you're coming back. 
Amen. Being one with God leads to the next precept, which is adoption. Which is adoption. I know some of those words are kind of far away from people on this side. But the next word is adoption. And, and somebody says, well, 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 what is adoption? The adoption is, praise God, the fact that not only did God save you. Amen. See, saving me is one thing. Making me part of the family, that's another thing. Somebody say hallelujah. So God didn't just save you and leave you out there. God saved you and he said, not only am I going to save you, you were an enemy of the Christ. And he said, but now I'm going to make you a son of God. I'm going to make you a child of God. I'm going to adopt you in my family. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, 1 John 3 and 2 says this. It said, beloved... Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Amen. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise God. So God didn't save you, praise God, just to save you. He saved you for you to be like him. And in order to be like him, you've got to be in his family. And deliverance. Uh, Col Colossians 1 and 3 says this. Who he had delivered us, who said, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Let's talk about the Lord Jesus. Now, deliverance is a little bit different, praise God, because you find out that salvation actually means deliverance, but even though salvation is something I possess, deliverance is something that is like setting me free. See, it's like I come down to a jailhouse and you're in jail and I unlock the door and you still sitting in jail. I've been delivered because it's been paid for. If God delivered me, I ought to have what God delivered me to have. If somebody say hallelujah. The last one is preservation. Praise God. And this is the one I like. Amen. Because in John 10 and 28, he says, I give it to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He said, My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. He said, and no man is able to put them out of my father's hand. And, and you find out that pre uh, preservation, praise God, the idea of preservation, now I know people say, you know, I, if a pastor, you believe one saved, always saved. No, I believe one saved, always saved. I believe one lost, once lost. If, if you don't believe in one saved, always saved, you must believe in once lost, always lost. Because if my salvation is left, to, James said it this morning, if my salvation and my stuff is left up to me, I ain't going to make it. God says, I will preserve you. I will keep you. Yes. Somebody stand on your feet.